everyone loves Lego. This is our DNA. It's the foundation for us as a company and the reason why we are here and the reason why you are here today. There are more than 100 Lego bricks for every man, woman, and child on Earth. By 2019, the population of many figures will overtake humans. This is the first time we have ever in Lego history had somebody dressed up as an item of food. <laughs> what goes on behind these doors has been a closely guarded secret until now. We would call this the creative campus of the Lego group. What we have done here in Denmark is that we are not selling sugar in the cafeteria. This is a no camping sign. You can't leave your stuff on a desk for more than an hour and a half. We'll see how adults are enjoying Lego like never before. You can't see that, dude. That's it. Hold that there. It's a little bit of fun. It's a little bit of art. And how tough it is to land one of the most coveted jobs in the world, a Lego set designer. This is the dream. This is what my, my life has been working up to. Lego is a passion, an obsession, and the most powerful toy brand on the planet, and still growing. So our ultimate ambition is to reach every child in every country all over the world. It's a surprising success story. Does it feel like a cult? Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say cult, I would say family. It feels like a family. Since it first arrived in the UK in 1958, the British public has had a love affair with Lego. In the county of Cornwall, it's become part of modern folklore. After some of the storms, you tend to get stacks and stacks of plastic washed up. And if you rummage amongst it, that's where you'll find your Lego. Legend has it that in 1997, a cargo ship traveling from Denmark hit a storm and lost a container full of Lego. After years at the bottom of the sea, pieces began washing up on these shores. It's hunting for treasure. It's very exciting. That's my prized possession. Are you sure it's Lego? Yeah, absolutely, but it's a bit mangled and it doesn't have a little Lego logo anymore. This beach is now a magnet for loyal fans of the brick. 23-year-old Justin has come here all the way from London. Did your girlfriend know you did? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, balmy. I think that's the phrase, but it's what us, uh, us fanatics do for the, the love of the brick. Justin takes his dedication to the plastic brick very seriously. I want to be a Lego designer, and that's what I've always wanted to be. The idea of having my own set and a child to get that set, I think there's nothing greater. You're basically providing them with this, this imagination, really. I'm a part of a company that is trying to do something that is hopefully making a positive impact in a child's life or on the planet as a whole. Super top security. <laughs> if Lego is a religion, one of its high priests is an Englishman. <laughs> this is so typical. <laughs> right, we're in. Matthew Ashton is a creative guru here. He's one of just two vice presidents, the highest level a designer can reach. So as you can see, memory lane. He's visiting Lego's private archives, where pristine sets from day one are stored. So this is 1977 to 1982. I was probably about three years old when all of this stuff started, so this is pretty much what I was playing with as a kid. I think I had this one, and definitely had this one. When I was growing up, me and my brother worked like chalk and cheese. We were so different. I was sort of the, the shyer, um, more creative one that was just colouring in and doing collages and a bit of sewing and all of that kind of stuff. And my brother was practising karate and sports. And I think Lego was one of the only toys where we sort of really, really bonded. This is some of the first Lego Star Wars sets. Lego has been such a fond part of my childhood memory. and. There's kids that are just getting a really, really good toy in their hand. Things can be going on in their life that isn't great, and this is just something that 
you know, gives them gives them that really bit of bit of fun that, that that they all need and all deserve, and hopefully they'll have memories mm. like I did. <laughs> Lego is a passion for millions around the world. Every year, they get thousands of letters and emails from children who dream of a career playing with bricks. Today, Matthew is opening the doors of Lego HQ to some of these dreamers and running a recruitment workshop to find the next generation of set designers. Just setting foot inside the door. There's so much adrenaline and so much excitement going on. I would not like to be going through this. Among the final 40 who have made it this far is beachcomber Justin. He's battled through assessments and Skype interviews for this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Justin, how are you feeling? Nervous. <laughs> Excited. Maybe. The pressure to perform starts immediately. So you're taking turns to present your homework. Two weeks ago, everyone was sent a box of bricks with simple instructions. Create a new Lego world. A lot of space. Matthew called in some of Lego's most successful designers to help him. They want to see original ideas. The rebellion, if you think of it like Star Wars, is the hackers and the robotics guys. This is a very goofy dragon. You rub his belly and his tail wags. Justin, nice to meet you. I've seen the uh, explosion in my head of, uh, like, this is, this is actually happening. This is a thing. I'm in Denmark, and this is, this is the dream. This is what my, my life has been working up to. Sort of based in a Victorian London steampunk-esque world. And this is a clockwork sword cutter. Yeah. <laughs> the next one is a steamship. Eliza Studworthy, and she's got a steam powered uh, gun. Um, Whoa. Hey. Just my look. Uh, it also destroys in my hands. Um, There's way more functions in that than I expected as we started yeah. pulling it apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not really easy. Great Thank stuff. You. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Presentation over. The candidates now have to roll up their sleeves, grab some bricks, and show how well they can build. I see some vehicles. I see mechs. <laughs> So you guys jumped straight on the floor. Penguin. Yeah. <laughs> Passion is really, really important. Talent is, of course, the most important thing, but it's also how they'll fit in with the team is, is really important to us as well. Every model is kept for Matthew to cast his expert eye over. There's a few that may not have come across as well as we'd hoped. We just want to make sure that we get the right people. Um, and if we don't get them all from this workshop, we'll, we'll do it again. Justin and the rest of the candidates have just one more day to prove they've got what it takes to be part of the Lego story. If the young hopefuls are successful, they might end up in Matthew's job. He was an executive producer on the Lego movie and looks after many of the company's most successful kits. We had some issues the last time with our uh, hilarious hot dog costume yes. character. Yeah. Today, he's reviewing the new minifigure series. It actually broke here. Yeah. And might, that might give us a problem with the uh, with strength. You could add some material sort of this way. His arm's not moving that well. But it, yeah. It's obviously more important that we get this fixed. Yeah. I, I think. Yeah. We don't need a lot of posability in the arms no. with this anyway, because like a real person in a costume yeah. is kind of a little yeah. bit restricted yeah. anyway. So I think so, but there's there's also over 200 here. designers from around the world work for Lego in Denmark. I think if you look at the design department in general, we're uh, yeah. <laughs> a right eclectic mix I of like know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we've got a load of like yeah. comic book guys and guys yeah. that are superhero stuff yeah. and figures. And people who do all that role play reenactment stuff where yeah. you go in a forest and pretend to be an elf <laughs> yeah. and all those kind of things. Yeah. So I, th I think there's probably a lot of us that don't really want to grow up. Give it a little strength that way, and that yeah. way he can still move his arms a little bit. Yeah, but from an art direction point of view, it's looking great. He's okay. super cute. This is pretty much what we do in the meeting. What we're having to do in this meeting is go back a few steps and talk about a series that is coming on the market fairly soon. So, because what we're working on right now isn't going to be launched until um, 2016. So that is obviously top, 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 top secret. Lego may be about having fun, but it is very serious about keeping things hush-hush. 
Aurora knows exactly where the real design magic happens. What we're seeing here, this is uh, a part of our product development area. This is the creative campus of the Lego Group. Are we right to look in the window? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I hope they have removed all the confidential stuff from the, from the windows. But as you can see, you can see the, there's actually bottles in the windows. So approximately 400 people are working in here on uh, developing new products. We are building now a factory in China, which will have more than 1,000 employees. So that, of course, will add the number of employees there. What's happened there? They discovered you filming. They probably saw us filming, and then they decided to close up the windows. Why did they do that? Well, they don't want to, to, for you guys to, to maybe get a sneak peek of what's inside. <laughs> so they saw us? Yeah. Decided to close it? Probably. a mold technician, makes sure the machines create the perfect color brick every time. In the mold, there are 12 to 16 needles with color in it. And even though I, I clean the barrel or the, th the cylinder, there's still going to be some old color on the needle. And when we push the new color through, it'll mix up. So what happens to these bricks? We throw them out. They're cool. They're pretty cool, yeah. But they might end up in the wrong hands and on eBay. <laughs> the bricks in every new batch are first checked on the factory floor and then sent to quality control for detailed analysis. You have to have attention to details. I used to work in, uh, in restaurants and uh, the details are very important. If you haven't got it, you would be like, you, 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 you know, you'll miss a lot of mistakes. Not much gets past Klaus and his team. If the dimensions of the brick are just four one thousandth of a millimeter off, it will be rejected. The bricks are also tested for the all important clutch power to make sure they stick together. I've been on Lego for 10 years. I enjoy my work, I enjoy my colleagues. The different departments become a family for a lot of people, I think. The Lego company becomes a lifestyle. <laughs> Roar, the keeper of the Lego secrets, has been with the company seven years. Here we have the cafeteria, which feeds up a few hundred people every day. Here we have the color coding of the food. So this is red, so that means uh, don't eat too much here. Yellow means it's like medium, and the green stuff is the healthy stuff. So, so I won't be having the prawns and phyllo pastry today. <laughs> or maybe I will. What we have done here in Denmark is that we are not uh, selling sugar in the cafeteria, and you will also see the vending machines out here. You have got candies here, but it's, it's sugar-free, and you also have juice, so there's some kind of natural sugar in there, but you don't have any candy bars and stuff like that. In the UK, an increasing number of grown men and women spend huge amounts of money and time on their private passion. I've been obsessed with Lego for many, many years. It's so when I'm playing, you know, just building, doing whatever, creating, I shut down from everything else I've been stressing about from work. I get completely lost in it. 41-year-old Mark is a dedicated AFOL, or adult fan of Lego a community obsessed by the brick. I can always remember going back into work after Christmas and there's always those discussions, oh, what'd you get Mrs. get you for Christmas, blah, blah, blah. And I just, I, I didn't go in and say, oh, yeah, she got me the Republic gunship, brilliant. I'd just keep quiet and say, yeah, just the normal, you know. And you'd just keep like that because you just, especially being a bloke, you're just opening yourself for ribbon. Mark builds up to 40 sets a month. The bigger sets, like this $350 Avengers helicarrier, contains over 3,000 pieces and can take days to build. Bag-wise, I'm halfway through. I'm on page 199 out of 438. Don't put it behind your Bible. To speed things up, Mark invited his wife Angela to help. 
We've got quite a nice little system going now. She sorts all the pieces, which speeds up the build because you're not rummaging through a big pile of bricks looking for things. She's going to use the space I've got to sort out bag three while I build for bag two. With their kids in bed, Mark likes to make sure he finishes each build in one sitting, no matter how long it takes. Oh, so all the greys and the blacks are just going into one. We do get Lego blindness after all. You could be staring at the piece that's right in front of it you need, but you just can't see it for some reason. It starts to blur. We're near the end. Morning. Morning. Come in. You finished? Just about. I can tell by the bags under my eyes. <laughs> well, there you go. That's the finished product. We've done quite well. It was about ten past one. I looked at the clock. Was and it? I said right. one o'clock. Yeah. This is essentially targeted at adults, and this is a display piece. But Lego have put playability into it. You've got a factor called swooshability, so we have got the planes. We can go shh if we want to be children which is brilliant, because at the end of the day, we might be adults, but we still like to reverse to our childhood every now and then and just have a bit of fun. Mark designs and edits magazines for a living. He's his own boss and works from home. This is where all the magic happens. I call it an office. It's essentially a toy shop. It gets out of control. I don't think I've got a free shelf. This is my modular high street. They're just the houses. I've got a whole road and tramway that goes with it. He is now planning a bold new venture, taking his love of the brick to the next level. He wants to tap into the millions of affles across the country and the world. We're launching Bricks Culture, which will be a big, glossy, thick magazine. There is this market for adult fans, and there's a lot of guys out there creating some amazing stuff. So it's about sharing what people are doing with the world. Mark has come to friend Andy, a photographer, for help. Look quite interesting this way. To get his magazine off the ground, he needs the Lego group's approval, so he's creating a presentation to pitch them in Billund. We are doing something that's not been done before, but there's a very big risk that they'll turn around and go, oh, so it's just another magazine. It is very important that they buy into what we're doing. We've got an exciting new team brief that we're going to give. Back in Billund, Justin has one final task to show he's got what it takes to be a Lego set designer, a team build. Each group has to design a series of models that together will make a new Lego play theme. This is a very kind of condensed, intense form of what we're doing behind the walls, kind of down the road. Sky racers, sort of like sky punk. Because we've got a load of space parts, what if we don't do space? One thing that was for me, the Lego set designer has always been the the ultimate. There was a Lego club at school, and I was a part of the Lego fan club. And through breakups and nights out, it's always been there. Yeah. you think about what's relevant for kids today, what cartoons are kids watching? What are the big movies? You know, what are their kind of reference points? When we start thinking about the briefs, you always kind of look back, you know, what did you enjoy as a kid? But, you know, you kind of have to find a twist. You know, it's like, what's going to be that edge that kind of takes it from pirates to, oh, pirates? Just having a story on the front of the box can really, really inspire the kids to really, really want to play. Some kids, building in itself is a complete joy, and, and they're just so proud of, of what they create at the end of it. And for other kids, they're just desperate, desperate to role play and play out an adventure. OK, people, please get your models up to the table. Who puts these play features in? They're dangerous. Our theme is called uh, Moon Raiders, and uh, basically it's a, a typical uh, good versus bad. And because it was loosely based on like the classic pirates, um, they needed a shark. Uh, so there's a moon shark, a shark. with a, a laser beam attached to it. Right. To um, huge, huge thank you to you all. Now the hard work is over for you guys, and this is going to be a really, really tough decision. This is the dream. It's it's been the thing from day one. Of, of like as soon as I could break my brother's models, that's just what I wanted to do. I wanted to design Lego sets. I've been obsessed with it. So I mean, this is the 
the ultimate job, so fingers crossed. It's going to be fun being back in London, just, yeah, anxious. As Justin flies home from Billund, adult fan Mark arrives for his make-or-break meeting with Lego. If Lego turn around today and decide that it's not for them, that really cuts off a lot of exclusive content. I might look calm, um, but, uh, you know, we'll, I'm sure I won't be once I'm in the meeting room. Hi, Hi I'm Mark. Nice to meet you. I want to go away and then be going, yep, I like what he's doing, we like him, we'll help him. It is vital. If Mark doesn't get the Lego stamp of approval, his dream will be over before it's even begun. Lego is having a boom time and expanding around the world. In London, it's setting up a state-of-the-art outpost for executives. They call it the hub, and it's no ordinary workplace. This office is designed under activity-based working module. So like hot desking? So it's not hot desking. We don't say hot desking. Nobody has their own desk here. So not even our corporate management have their own desks. You're fully mobile. So we have an app for this building. And on the app, it will say who's in the building, and it says what floor you're on. It doesn't say where you are on the floor. You have to go and find somebody on that floor. But you can do that also emailing them, texting them. Like most staff, Katie is new here, but is responsible for helping the company's values take root. So, like in every Lego office around the world, she makes sure the brick is always close at hand. You put a ball everywhere in every, in every room and every table so that at some point in the day, you probably will come into contact with the product. I don't think most people are sort of judging people on exactly what they build. Everything is sort of based on being able to be creative and indulge in that sort of childlike play. Taking a lead from the Danish mothership, there are helpful guidelines for staff to follow. So, this is a no camping sign to tell you that you've left stuff on your desk for too long. The rule is you can't leave your stuff on a desk for more than an hour and a half. Have you had any fist fights break out because of this? Not yet. Not yet. And you can't eat at your desk. I saw some people downstairs. Sneaky snacking. Mm -hmm. You don't want to say it's like an enforcement. It's not a don't do this, don't do this. Obviously, there are things that we've said like not eating. You know, that is a, that is a don't do this. The idea is that people will self-police. What would be brilliant is to come up with a plan of who we can and can't talk to. You know, to In Billund, Mark is wrapping up his pitch for a new Lego magazine targeted exclusively for adults. Thank you. Take care. That went very well. It went better than expected. So, uh, yeah, happy boy now. See, there was pressure. I'm smiling now. I wasn't smiling this morning. They really saw the uh, value in British culture. They liked the fact that we're pitching to a slightly different audience. This is a market they're aware of, and I think they were quite impressed that I've spotted it. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty chuffed, to be honest. Watch where you're walking over here as well. There was uh, a few uh, hazards of the... Uh, Pet walking variety. Back on home soil, Mark wastes no time getting his magazine up and running. He begins by putting Lego in a tree. It's quite nice if you actually shoot this way and shoot into the car. Like the That's it, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wood, it? So the passerby is odd, but there is a reason in behind the madness. Cool. We're trying to bring something different. It's a little bit of fun, it's a little bit of art. His first feature is about Tom, a gardener and Lego fan from Bristol, England, who spent two years creating his collection of birds. I think it's great that I'm helping kids to open their eyes that there's more to what you can build with Lego than just man-made objects like cars and trucks. I want some nice pose shots with, yep, Tom and his favourite bird. A eureka moment came along when I was digging in the garden and I'd, I'd taken a break and put my spade into the, uh, into the soil stood back and admired what I was doing, and a robin landed on the spade handle. Just sit there with this right. And that's really where the whole project started. Every year, Lego gets thousands of random ideas for sets. Most go nowhere, but Tom is one of the lucky ones. His birds have been made into an official Lego set. And he also gets a cut of the sales. 
I do get royalties. I think it's 1% of the net profits. I'm not in it for the money, I, you know, I'm in it for the love, really. But, of course, I'd like to be rewarded more for the idea. Yeah, nice. 10%, 5%, something like that would probably be more fair in my eyes. To help boost sales, Tom travels to London's biggest toy store. I was the lucky man that actually designed those. I've signed it, and it won't go down in value, so it's basically like... His birds are on sale across the world, and they're flying off the shelves. There we go. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I know I've got some cash coming my way, but I have no idea what, how much that's going to be. No idea how many have been produced. Hopefully thousands, millions, that'd be great. Do you want me to sign it to... To Austin. In just over a month, Tom will find out exactly how much money his Lego adventure has earned him. Um, we, yeah. There we go. I'm very excited to see uh, what I'm seeing here. Today is the grand opening of Lego's new London hub. As the last of five new workspaces in Singapore, Shanghai, Connecticut, and Billund that have opened in the past six months, it's a memorable occasion. So Lego rolled out the big guns. This is a really exciting moment. And uh, I have to pinch myself because this is actually, I don't know, like the third or fourth time I'm opening an office this year. It's like every other month. <laughs> uh, this really is to deliver on our ultimate ambition to reach every child in every country all over the world. CEO Jürgen, who's known around the world as JVK, took control in 2004, at the age of just 36, when Lego was battling against bankruptcy. He turned the company's fortunes around by focusing on its founding values. This whole philosophy of Lego as a way of learning structured but also highly creative thinking is something I, you know, I deeply believe, like it's, I haven't invented it, but it is as if I have. Last one we've been JVK works closely with the owners, the Christensen family. They are all multi-billionaires and rarely seen in public. And I'm very happy we also today have the grandson of the founder, Kirk Christensen, uh, with us here. As a family-owned company, we all understand that we're here to serve a greater purpose. The family ownership is crucial to Lego's DNA, and JVK uses it to beat the drum and rally the troops. The people who really like the culture and the values it has, they sort of self-select into that culture. And I think our staff are really motivated by the purpose of the company. So we get people who want to work for a greater purpose than making money. The way that LEGO recruit people, they want people that are going to fit in with the culture, people that are going to get along with the culture and really sort of live the values of LEGO. And that's what they look for. I've travelled quite a lot so far, been to quite a lot of sales offices and um, what I would say is you get the same feeling from the people in all of the offices you go to. It's the Lego DNA. A friend said to me that it's like brainwashing, like you'll come in and they'll be like, but it's amazing and we don't focus on money. But then when you come in and you actually see it, it's like, oh, OK, it's all true, it's all true. But does it feel like a cult? Um... <laughs> I wouldn't say cult, I would say family. It feels like a family. On the other side of London, Justin hopes he'll be the next person to join the family. He's still waiting to hear if he's got his dream job as a set designer. Sat there in this limbo stage, just waiting to hear. And at any call I'll pick up normally, Sort of when it says an unknown number, I know it'd be like PPI or sort of have you had an accident in the last two weeks, so I'm even answering those. He lives in the student dorm, so most of Justin's Lego collection is back at his parents' house. This is a very, very bare minimum um, of stuff that I've got. Will and Kate were sort of the main ones um, that I wanted to keep down here. I remember hearing a story that one of our tutors had a big fishbowl on his desk, just filled with these heads. But they're just the classic smiley face, and I just really like it as a nice piece. I always remember when I was a child, I was after this set called Skull Island, and I remember writing at Santa's list, I really would like Skull Island. And although I got fantastic presents throughout the day, um, on Christmas Day, I didn't get that set. And 
that was the one thing I wanted. And on Boxing Day, um, I remember my dad saying, oh, look out at the lawn, like something's fallen from Santa's sleigh. And for me, that was the best thing, because on the lawn was the set, in, in the middle, all wrapped up. And, and I said to them, if I could ever find out who designed that set and write to them and say, mate, you inspired me and you made me want your job. Can I just get this straight? Hello? Hello? Hi, is that Justin? Yeah, speaking. Hi, this is Matthew from Let Go. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. I'm basically phoning to let you know that we're really, really pleased that we would like to offer you a job. Oh, wow. Oh, jeez. Um... The job that we want to offer you is on the Lego superheroes team. So Batman and Superman, Spidey and the Avengers and X-Men and oh, wow. all of them. Wow. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm speechless. Thank you very, very much. Made my, 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 made my life, I think. I was going to say weekend, but yeah, it's a bit, a bit tiny, yeah. It was your personal story of what Lego was meant to you since you were a kid. Do you think that you'd fit in really well with the team? So, thank you very much, and then hopefully yeah. we'll see you in Billund very soon. No worries, thank you very much. Bye. Wow. So, yeah, that was the call. Um, so, yeah. Speechless. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. What, it's like, what do you do when you... The thing you wanted the most has happened. Well, shaking. Shaking. Really, really bloody good news. Um, shaking a bit. I'm overexcited. <laughs> After landing the ultimate job as a Lego set designer, Justin sets out for his new life in rural Denmark. Check in for Billund, please. Is it fitting real now? No, no, yeah, it hasn't dropped in. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think a week into it, maybe, then it'll be like, oh, I'm not in London anymore. It's... In Billund, he's met by his new family, designers from the superheroes team and taken straight to Lego's top secret design center. Ooh, really excited. That's what's inside. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. The pearly gates. <laughs> For me, it's, it's heaven. It's been a dream. Justin meets Matthew, who's his new boss. You. Welcome. Thank you. Well, this is where you're going to be working, so okay. we're um, going to take you to your desk and give you mm -hmm. a little bit of a tour around. He has officially become one of the chosen few. And I'm afraid this is as far as you're allowed to go. <laughs> Mark's plan to publish a luxury magazine about Lego, just for adults, is only days from the print deadline. It's going well, but we've got a lot to do. Everything with an orange line through has been designed. So you can see there's a lot there that's not been designed. Right-hand man Tim is helping Mark get his magazine to press. That's the cover image. That line there is just for the connoisseur of everything Lego. It's, it was some form, It's still right? really yeah. good. Connoisseur is perfect because it's not exclusive. It's just like you like the finer things in life. <laughs> The whole purpose of this is to celebrate our hobby that we love. It's a celebration of Lego. It's actually hit the mainstream so much, it's almost cool to play with Lego now. Finally, Bricks Culture is ready to launch. But there's been a problem with the printer. I open the boxes and they've just got the run covers on them and the pressure's on them to get those magazines to us for 4.30, and the launch starts at 5, so it's going to be busy. Mark has many of the AFOL community arriving any minute. He has a goodie bag for all of them, but his magazines are stuck on a van in traffic. I will calm down in a minute, I promise. They're literally meant to be 30 seconds Things always happen on time. And there's an important guest from the LEGO group Mark needs to impress. I grew up in the Eiffel community myself, 
and the community has grown and has become more visible. It is as if the geeks and the nerds are not supposed to stay in the closet anymore. It's, it's okay. I think that's the magazines there. I'm hoping it is. It's a courier van. Let's just open them. With the magazines in hand, Mark can now share his labor of love with the world. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please give a warm welcome, Mr. Mark Giss. A massive thank you for all your support. This is your magazine as much as it's mine, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy what we have to offer. Thank you very much, guys. Enjoy yourself. Lovely, really nice. It just has a really good feel to it and a really good mixture of different features and articles. I'm really impressed. <laughs> Photography looks amazing. Unusual content as well, not what you'd expect to find in a Lego magazine. Going a bit less mainstream with this. We're certainly feeling a niche in the Lego market. Loving the article about myself. Yeah, I'm more than happy. Incredibly well received. People have come up to me and said, Rich Culture, wow, what an amazing concept. We never even thought of anything like that, but we love it. It's a family. These people are the Bricks family. Mark has definitely won over his Affol friends, but will Lego give it the thumbs up? Seeing a high-class exclusive magazine like Bricks Culture was not something I'd even consider half a year ago, but from a company perspective, we are happy as long as they read our and, and, and live by our fair play policies and, and brand values. Fresh from enjoying his newfound celebrity status, Tom is back home in Bristol, building more and more birds. 70 different species and counting. This is one of the wings of the bar now that I'm building. You need to be quite dexterous to be doing fiddly jobs like this. You need this one goes on here. So I've got a little bit more weight on there, they'll droop down a bit, but I think I could probably get away with... No. Earlier today, Tom got the email from Lego he's been waiting for. Details of the royalties he's earned from the first three months of sales of his bird set. Hi, Tom. Please find our Q1 2015 reporting. So, yeah, I think Lego have done pretty well out of that, and so have I. I don't want to give too much away, but you could buy a car with it. It's not going to be a, a Porsche or Ferrari or anything like that, but you could buy a car. I can afford to have a holiday. The plan was always to go to Colombia, and it's been a dream of mine to go to New York, so I'd like to make that dream come true with, with, with some of this money. An exciting, very, very happy day. In Billund, the champagne is also flowing. The Lego Group has just announced its 10th consecutive year of growing sales with huge profits. So, yes, everything is actually quite awesome. Uh, the Pied Piper of Lego, CEO JVK, is talking to press from all over the world. As long as they stay on message. I think it's not really for me to, uh, to comment on, on, on that question. Unlike most multinationals, Lego is privately owned, so it can choose exactly what it says and when. I don't care, they can ask it, but yeah. they're wasting our time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The international press can't get enough of this awesome success story. But the Danish media has a more intimate view of what the Lego group is all about. The Danish view Lego as extremely professional. That's what Lego is also known for in Denmark. That's the secrecy. You don't ever get to talk to a real person. You talk to people who are very observant of what they say and are, are very uh, observant of how the things they say will be interpreted by others. But maybe people here, uh, they love Lego so much that they will let Lego do whatever Lego wants. People talk about Lego as being part of a family. Yes. They've also talked about it as being part of a religion. Yes. Have you heard that? Yes, I, I, or a philosophy of, uh, you know, a, a, a very deep philosophy that there's a certain discipline to uh, the Lego idea of uh, what play is and how important it is. That's a philosophy. You can call it a religion if you like, but I think it's more like a philosophy or set of principles. Instead of calling it religion, I'll call it something spiritual. The company's mainstay is to guide things through relationships. That's why people say it has a family feel.
So how do you regulate behavior in a family? You primarily do that by role modeling and relationships. You don't want to have a bad relationship with your sister or your mother or your children. So that is a very different relationship and it really allows a company to be purposeful. It's been six months since Justin left the UK to build a new life in Billund. Still not properly sunk in. Every day it's getting better because I'm constantly learning, constantly trying out new things. Justin's first set will be released in a month, but he's now a Lego employee, so details are hard to come by. What can you tell me about this first set that's coming out? Uh, I really enjoyed designing it, I think that's, that's the main thing. Other than that, everything's top secret. It is tricky when your parents ask, oh, what are you up to today? And I can't tell them anything, so they've, they've learned not to ask, I think. So, which is good. Keeps me, keeps me off the hook. Justin is fitting seamlessly into the Lego world. It's amazing. It's this great family atmosphere, and you feel like you're part of something. There's a sense of pride of being in there, and there's all the Lego that you could ever want. It's almost like being in a, in a chocolate factory and I've been given the golden ticket. The brick has never been more popular. Lego is now the most profitable toy company in the world. And it's not stopping there. I've actually got the producer of the movie that we're looking at coming over today. Matthew is already in production with the Lego Batman film and other movie projects that are, of course, completely top secret. This is a good bit of my job. I get to see movie things before anybody else on the planet does. In 2017, Lego will open a new factory in China as it targets the Asian markets head on. And in Billund, the guardian of Lego secrets roar allows the world an occasional glimpse inside. If you go to the designer's work area, they'll have a lot of these. I wish I have had this when I was a child. But continues to protect the real secret with his trademark smile. Well, I could show you, but I'd have to kill you afterwards. 